Okay. Beat him. I'm gonna show y'all boys on fun, man. I'm What's it up, baby? You already know what it is. The big boss how boss dog can't poke through them. Don't! Hit the top of this box, it was good with you. Before I get to my soliloquy, y'all know the routine. Tough times don't ask what people do. Don't knock yourself. Call that man on health hotline. Remember, you matter. <laughs> it's going down like this and like that. Now, post fire reaction. Javante Tank Davis versus Frank Martin. Before I get into the breakdown, shout out to Frank Martin. Warrior, shout out to Javante Tank Dar Davis. Warrior, I was gonna say Darius. <laughs> Warrior, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to both them two black men who basically got in the ring. They made a lot of money and they represented. So shout out to both of them. Now peak game. This is what I saw in the fight. Frank Martin got tired. And that's basically what I predicted. I said Frank Martin would gas out. I think Frank Martin got tired. I think Frank Martin also got comfortable. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Tank was able to catch him. Now, early on, Frank Martin was doing good work. Like, round one and two, I gave to Frank. Because Frank was landing them, you know, them shots. Good combination punching and getting out the way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but as the rounds went on, you kind of start seeing Frank throw less and less, right? And then he would put combinations in spurts. And then, you know, he went from throwing combinations to him not throwing nothing, him just moving. You know, him flinching and overreacting. I think it was round five where Tank kind of, uh, I won't say bugged, but I can't think right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. He didn't bug at him, but he fainted. That's the word. He, he threw a faint at... Uh, uh, Frank Martin, and that's when Frank Martin kind of overreacted. You know what I'm saying? So Frank kind of smiled. I mean, Tank kind of smiled. I was like, okay. And I think that's when Tank realized he got Frank. Right? Then you just proceeded to see him cut it up after that. You know what I mean? Throwing down, chopping, you know, shots. You know what I'm saying? And Frank Martin was kind of chilling on the ropes too long. And I was saying this when I was watching the fight. Frank Martin should have stayed in the center of the ring. You know what I mean? Should have stayed in the center of the ring. And I felt like Frank was kind of moving too much. You know what I mean? You don't have to move that much. All he had to do is just kind of change the angle. You know? Just just by making this by a couple of inches. That's it. Pause. No did it. But that's that's what he should have did. You know what I'm saying? You just got to make Tank miss by a couple of inches. Okay. Change the angle. You know? Frank started going back in a straight line. He kind of started chilling on the ropes. You know, he wasn't really throwing that much. He wasn't using the jab as much anymore as the rounds went on. He, I just think he gassed out, man. And, you know, when that round eight came and Frank was chilling on the ropes, Tank finished him off. Threw a, a, a right hook, right? Kind of made Frank Martin slide over a little bit. And then Tank landed that uppercut. That uppercut really is what set up the knockout shot because the uppercut had Frank Martin dazed. And then that, that straight left was the icing on top. It was a beautiful combination. And Tank was working on that in the back. You know what I mean? When he was warming up. If you see him on the pad, hand pads with Coach Calvin Ford, you'll see Tank worked on that same combination. You know what I mean? That uppercut. You know what I mean? Now he didn't throw the two which was his straight left. He didn't throw that, but that was the icing on, on the cake. You know what I mean? That knocked out Frank Martin, you know? But Frank Martin, I don't want him to hold his head down, keep his head up, because he fought a good fight. Early on, he brought us a tank. You know, he went down He went down on his shield, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got some dudes that won't do that, Shakur. Uh, he went out on his shield. He fought, a, he fought a good competitive fight, and he put his best foot forward, and I'm proud of him. You know what I'm saying? Frank Martin don't got nothing to hang his hat about. This is a learning lesson for him. You know what I'm saying? And he's able to, you know, learn from this and get better. I still think Frank Martin is a, a top 135-pound fighter. You know what I mean? Even after Tank knocked him out, you just ran into Tank. That's just what it is. Tank do spectacular things when he in that ring. Pause. You know what I'm saying? 
but I don't want Frank Martin to hold his head and things like that. Now, I was the one sitting here saying, I believe Frank Martin needs to go to 140. Um, although there are a lot of still a lot of big fights at 135, um, I, I just want Frank to go to 140. I feel like he'll feel better up there. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, 135, you got a Lomachenko who's kind of on his way out. You got a Shakur. I mean, he could fight Shakur, but Kour is looking to fight Tank. You know what I mean? So, you know, and I don't know if he want to immediately go into a Shakur fight after this. I mean, knowing L, you know, L power, you know, because him and L, L don't believe in light touches. So, knowing L, L probably be like, hey, man, we're going to fight Shakur. You know what I mean? You finna get right back in there. You finna go get it. And Frank, you know, he believe. He going to be like, right, let's get it. Do I think he should do that? No. I think that Frank needs to really reevaluate, you know, him competing at 135. I think he should go to 140. And just start competing up there. You know what I mean? Let's go to a new weight class and really get to it up there. It's a lot of talent up there. You know what I'm saying? You got Gary Antoine Russell who just lost a close decision. You got Matias who just lost. But it's 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 good fights. You got Regis Progray up there. You got Devin Haney up there. You know, you got uh 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 Tio Fimo. Like it's a lot of talent up there right now. That 140, you know, is 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 popping right now. So I'll say Frank Martin, if I'm him, I look to go up there. You know what I'm saying? Kinda, in a sense, he kinda gotta fast track his career a little bit. Cause I think Frank Martin is like 28, 29 years old. So they gonna have to kinda fast track him. You know what I mean? And, 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 and hopefully, you know, put him in these other fights. I mean, I, and this is the thing, a lot of Zervante Tank Davis opponents, after they lose to him, they're pretty successful. Look at Ryan Garcia, look at Eastside Pitbull Cruz, Pedraza, was winning at a one point until he ran into uh, Keyshawn Davis and, you know, uh, I think, yeah, he just recently fought Keyshawn Davis. And then before that, he was on a little run streak. And then he lost to somebody else. But Pedraza, man, he was on a little run. You know what I'm saying? He, he got the big fights with Lomachenko and uh, I want to say he fought Jorge Linares too. So Pedraza literally, literally did fought almost everybody after he lost the tank. So a lot of tank opponents, you know, are still like relevant in the sport of boxing today. It just ran as a tank. You get what I mean? And just because you lose the tank, don't mean you you are not a top fighter. You know what I'm saying? So I want Frank Martin to hold his head. You know, he got to look at the history. A lot of fighters that lose the tank still go on to be champions, still go on to be top fighters. Look at Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia got stopped by Tank, and then he go, and Ryan Garcia go and beat the brakes off Devin Haney. I got a video coming about Devin Haney, by the way. But, uh, that's just what it is. So, I'm not, I don't think Frank Martin should hold his head. Now, what's next for Tank? I think Tank... It's rumored that he gonna fight Vasil Lomachenko. I like that fight. You know, um, that's a fight where Tank can really get his respect from a boxing IQ stance. Cause people just look at Tank as a knockout artist. You know what I'm saying? That's how they look at him. Like, oh, you just gonna knock, you just here to knock dudes out. They don't look at him as having high IQ. And he showed his IQ in this Frank Martin fight by setting up that shot. You get what I mean? Now, most people may say, oh, Frank Martin was easy work. All he got is this. You know, all he got is that. But Frank Martin a good fighter, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's a damn good fighter. He's strong. You know, he got a Hall of Fame trainer in his, in his corner. And he got boxing. I, I won't say high boxing IQ, but he's high. his boxing IQ is pretty respectable. You know what I mean? He can set up some traps. He can set, uh, set up shots. Things like that. He's just still learning. He kind of learning on the job, if, if you want to just be real about it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Frank Martin, you know, is, 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 is a good fighter. But um, like I say, Tank probably going to fight Loma. Uh, you know, I know Kua's on this list. 
I still think personally he needs to fight Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I thought Devin Haney lost. You know what I mean? I, I that's unfinished business. You know, because that it, it's time to shut them them Haneys up. You know what I mean? They doing all that talking and you know, it, it, and it ain't even like let me tell you something. It ain't the fact that people dislike Devin Haney or hate him. It's just the fact that. They do unnecessary stuff for no reason. They draw a lot of attention to themselves for no reason. They speak on other fighters for no reason. It's like, bro, worry about your own career. Worry about yourself. But they too busy worrying about what this fighter doing, you know, what Tank doing, and, and things like that. I guarantee you they was hoping that Tank lose to Frank Martin. I guarantee you they was hoping that. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad that it come to that. And I keep saying this. They need to worry about their brand and their careers. Stop worrying about Tank. If you're not trying to fight him, don't worry about him. Don't worry about what he's doing. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, it's like they envious of this man, bro. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's like they watched that fight. I guarantee you. I guarantee they watched that fight. They was hoping for a slip up. That's what it was. Show us the court. They were hoping for a slip up. They was like, man, hopefully Frank Martin is able to get this thing done. And it didn't happen. So now it's on to the next. Which, <laughs> which is rumored to be Vasily Lomachenko, who's well, well capable of beating Tank. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit here and cap and say, oh, Vasily Lomachenko has no chance. Nah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm picking Tank to beat Vasil Lomachenko. Right? Vasil Lomachenko don't like power. He don't like when you hitting him with that power. He don't, he don't want to feel that. But Vasil Lomachenko is still Vasil Lomachenko. You know? He tricky, bro. You know what I'm saying? High boxing IQ, great feet. You know? That's gonna be one of them fights for Tank where it's not a big pay-per-view fight. Right? It's not. The biggest pay-per-view fight, I think, is between him and Devin. Not gonna lie to you, because of the beef, it's gonna sell. Because of the outside stuff around it. You know what I mean? Bill Haney gonna do a lot of talking to Calvin Ford and, you know, and to Tank. You know, Devin gonna talk. That's gonna be the million dollar that's probably going to break him and Ryan Garcia's uh, pay-per-view game. And that's going to be the most that Devin Haney makes in his career is, is, is that fight with Tank. Mark my words. You know what I'm saying? Mark my words. That's going to be the fight where Devin Haney, like, he might retire after that. He probably going to have to. You know what I'm saying? Because Tank going to break his jaw. I, I just... I, I, uh, it's only a matter of time. It, it, that's how we felt about Frank Martin. You know what I'm saying? When Frank was, or when Tank was, you know, walking him down, that's what's going to happen with Devin. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is, G. You know what I'm saying? I actually think Shakur will put up a better fight than Devin. You know what I'm saying? I think Shakur will, will attempt to put on a better fight, but he going to sleep too. He going to get sleepy too. You know what I'm saying? And it's no disrespect to these guys. These guys are great fighters. I told you. It's a lot of great fighters that fight Tank. Right? They lose. But after they lose, they go on and they go on and they win. You know, after they fight Tank, they go fight other fights and they win. Like, I honestly think Shakur and Devin Haney, I think Shakur would beat Devin Haney. Handily. You know what I mean? I think they could go on and do a lot of great things in the sport. Pause, no diddy, but that little man from Baltimore, Maryland, they can't see him. That's just that's just real. And I'm not trying to see and say he invincible. Because he not. He very well can lose. But the person I think he could lose to is Vasilo Machinko. That's the only person I feel like can give Tank his first loss. Because he's not going to get lured to sleep. 
know what I'm saying? He's very switched on. Tank gonna really have to go in his bag. I guess Vasil Lomachenko. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, and I was the one sitting there saying Vasil Lomachenko, you know, is a one trick pony. I still feel like that. I'm not gonna lie to you. But Vasil Lomachenko is such a great offensive fighter. It's crazy. His feet work is, he has some of the best feet work in boxing. He's such a great offensive fighter. It's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I think that Tank gonna have his hands full with that man. But I think Tank gonna knock him out. That's just what it is. It's gonna be one of them things with Tank down on the cards, you know, and Tank losing, he's frustrated, and then, you know, he just figure it out and land that bomb, and that's it. Rap. Marcelo Matico sleep. He gonna get sleepy too. He gonna get that Z Quill too. I'm telling you this. That man from Baltimore, Maryland, different, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I think that Javante Tank Davis is the face of boxing. And I think if he keep fighting these guys and he beat them, if he beat Lomachenko, that's going to move him up the pound for pound rankings. He beat Shakur Stevenson, that's going to move him up the pound for pound rankings. He beat Devin. If he run through all them people and still be undefeated, he would be number one pound for pound in boxing over Terrence Crawford. If he run through all those names, he would be number one pound for pound in the sport of boxing. Mark my words. But y'all let me know what y'all think about the fight. Tank Davis had a brilliant game plan. He executed. Frank did not execute. It was a great game plan. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Boss gone.